got two 43 inch TVs. For this example, they're both Samsung. Both came with these feet. Can be pretty stupid at times, or people think they're stupid because obviously they don't fit that much furniture. Difference being that one's now got a universal pedestal stand. So if I lift it off, you can see it's just on this base. These bases here, the arms are on the back of the TV, simply just hooks on. So if the feet don't fit your furniture, you can fit these to any TV. Uh, or the other common thing is people get the TV, put it on the wall, decide they're later going to put it on a tabletop, they've chucked the stand away, ain't got a stand. You buy one of these universal pedestals for 40 quid, 45 pounds for the one that swivels. So if you want it to swivel different angles in your room, pay the extra five pounds. It's not much really in the grand scheme of things. Back of the TV, you can see we've got those wall mount arms. The TV basically just goes on there. Wind the two screws in to secure it and job done. Keep watching the video. I'll build one of these up step by step if it helps anybody show how to attach the TV, different ways of measuring, obviously height adjustable for sound bars and so on. There are bigger ones available as well for larger TVs. These will probably do a 55 inch TV. For 65s it's the next model up. I'll put a couple of links below in the description, have a look. If it helps anybody I'm going to unbox this, build it step by step. This is the fixed version, which means that that bit doesn't twist. Obviously the swivel version as well, but I'll do it step by step. They're both pretty much the same principle to build. That part's the neck. These are the arms for the back of the TV with that securing screw, so it probably won't unwind in first. Plastic parts. The metal sticker there, a gasket. We've got a spanner in there and some Visa fixing bolts. Rubber pads for the glass base. More fixing bolts. So that's the part that the TV and the arms will hook onto. Instructions that aren't too bad to follow. And that is the glass base just put that to the side and we've got the shiny glossy finish from the top or the matte that's the bottom the painted part with the neck it's this plastic bit with the three holes in first onto the bottom of it and to the bottom you can see it's going to go on there plastic part for the top just a top cap to blank that off it says a bit of force there we go uh, just to point out as well, it's got those three threaded holes to line up with this part. So three threaded holes onto there so our bolts can go through into those threads. Glass base like that and try not to drop it, get it the right way. Get some screws out the screw pack. We've also got that metal washer and the rubber gasket so it doesn't put too much pressure on the glass to line up like that. Okay so I've just dropped the camera down for this bit to make it clear so we've got the rubber gasket that's going on first then the metal washer, three screws going through, put one screw in first to secure it and then the other two as well Quickly wind those in. While I've got it down here for this glass base, we've got these self adhesive rubber pads. Stick them on each corner and it will just stop it sliding about and scratching whatever surface it's on. And that's that attached. Should be nice and solid. Next thing is this plate, that's got four holes in it and then we've got a series of holes here so I can have it here, here or here so you've got those three different height arrangements. I'm going to put it in the middle for now and see how it ends up. Okay so bolt through that hole first and then through into there 
washer and a nut on the back. Just hand tighten them for a second. Get the others through. These are like small coach bolts, that square section to lock on the other side of the plate so they won't spin when you put your nuts on. Oops. Couple more washers. Nuts. With a supplied spanner in the kit, you can just tighten those up. And then that is pretty much the completed article. Obviously you've got your arms that go on the back of the TV. They simply just hook on that rail. The next step after building that pedestal stand is getting it on the TV. I've laid the TV on a large flat surface, bigger than the screen, so there's no pressure onto the screen itself because it's pretty delicate. I've also now got my pedestal stand. I've secured the arms on, well, loosely for now, just so I can measure up and see where I want my TV in relation to the hole. So we've got the four visa mount holes. On this example, they're 200 mil apart. And I can see there what sort of gap I want below the bottom of my TV to where I want the stand. And I can see already, put this too high, so I'll move this down one, try again. So I'm, I want a minimal gap really. I'm gonna go for about maybe a couple inch. If we've got a sound bar to go in between the TV and the base, I can leave a big gap like that, three or four inches or whatever I desire. There are the arms now back off the pedestal base. Go to that hole there and there. Have that big gap. Supplied Visa bolt pack. And some washers in there. I think they said 10 to 13 mil, so the shortest ones in there should be for this TV. There are bolts in there for all different TVs as well. Four washers. Quickly just whip those in. That's it. Just wind those securing screws out of it so I can put the TV on nice and easily. That's now ready to go on the stand. Okay, I hope this is the right angle to show this at, but we've got those hooks at the top and it simply just hooks on that rail, drops down like that. Nicely hooked on that rail. I just make it central as possible, and you can wind those up to secure it. Same for that one. So it's not going to fall off. I'll do anything stupid. Just turn it around. And that is it. Central stand, feet are gone. That's the width where the feet were before, so it's going to fit on a much, much narrower table. A lot more sensible. Probably, actually, to me, it looks better as well. Also, a few quid extra, you can have the swivel one.